Hi there, everyone. Um, I just wanted to pop in and say hello and just talk about a couple of things on my mind. Um, so I wanted to start by saying that probably a lot of you have noticed, in fact, not just probably, but many of you have noticed that over the last few months during this whole crazy time that we've been going through, I haven't been on social media a whole lot. I mean, I have from time to time, but not a whole lot. And I apologize for that because um, I've actually been sending love to all of you, thinking about all of you. I've been creating, working on um, building myself up, being more creative, creating, helping Danny and my team create an online platform. And I've still been working behind the scenes. But I have, I have to admit, I have taken a, a break from social media. And, um, and, and there are several reasons for that. So several months ago, when this whole thing started, the whole lockdown and everything started, um, I started to notice that people on social media were being less than nice to each other. And I started to notice a lot of conflicting views and just a lot of disagreements. And um, I started to almost feel like literally unwell, unwell within myself, like almost sick to my stomach by the amount of divisiveness that was just going on on social media. And of course, we were tuned into the news because we were all wondering what's going on and there was all this panic and everything. And yet when I would see people, normal human beings outside, you know, with, we'd all be with our masks and everything, but when I would be with normal human beings, they were all very nice and very helpful and, and it just wasn't like that in the real world. But media and social media was, um, was really, really frenetic and it was causing a physical reaction within me. So I found that I had to kind of back off from social media and I'd love to hear from you in the comments to know if you were feeling the same thing. But here's what's really interesting. A few weeks ago, I, I created a video which, was, which has got a lot of traction, more than most of my other videos, where I spoke about what I called parallel realities. And I spoke in that video about how when I was growing up, I was speaking multiple languages simultaneously. And uh, I was speaking a dialect of Indian, a dialect of Chinese, which is Cantonese, and I was speaking English. And I had friends from these three different communities. I mean, my family is Indian. Um, I lived in Hong Kong, which is predominantly a Chinese society. And I went to a British school with British people. And so there were people from three different cultures. And I was, um, and I was kind of jumping from one culture to the other. And, and these three realities existed simultaneously but they did not cross each other. And things were happening that the other, each culture did not relate to. You know, as I was explaining in the other video, which I would love for you to watch if you haven't already, it's from about three or four weeks ago. Um, I was explaining that they didn't even share the same religions. They didn't even believe in the same gods. They didn't have the same language. So these three, cultures and probably many other cultures which I had no access to all these cultures exist simultaneously and they are invisible to us unless we speak read and write that language because newspapers come out in that language and you can't read it so you don't know what's current in that culture unless you're immersed in it so there are invisible realities going on simultaneously which you're not aware of so this is something that really made me think differently. And when I had the NDE, I discovered there was yet another reality that was happening simultaneously. So then more recently, when I was feeling really, really like just heavy and bogged down by this world because of everything, like it's just automatic. You go on social media, or you go on the news, you just see what's happening. And everything was just feeling so... I guess negative for want of a better word and so divisive and people were so fearful and angry. I was thinking, oh my God, there has to be another reality to this. So I found myself spending more time doing what I call piercing through the veil and living more in that four or fifth dimensional reality and exploring stuff there. I found myself once again, and get, once again getting much closer to that other side during all these past six, seven months. But 
Before I get into that, what I wanted to say is shortly after I made that last video talking about these simultaneous realities, um, I discovered on Netflix a video which um, is called Social Dilemma. And if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you watch it because, um, uh, because it's, okay, it's a little bit disturbing. So let me warn you, it is a bit disturbing, but yet it is something that it has empowered me to know this. I feel a lot more empowered. And you know, for me, it's so important to tune in to empowering messages as opposed to things that disempower you. Social media felt disempowering to me for a while. It's ironic me saying that because here I am on social media talking to you. Social media is the way I communicate with you. It's the way I connect with all of you. It's the way I share my story. So it feels a little bit ironic me saying that, but yet I want you to know that I genuinely want you to connect with messages that empower you. And there is a lot out there right now. And there always has been. It's just, it's not just to do with the pandemic, but it's like there always has been a lot out there that also disempowers you. So that's why I suggest you watch this um, film, this documentary. Um, if you have Netflix, find it on Netflix. I'm not sure how else to get it, but if you can, if you have a friend who has Netflix, I highly suggest you watch it. And here's one of the things that blew me away about it. What blew me away is that all the social media platforms, um, and I really hope this video doesn't get pulled down for me saying that, but all the social media platforms <clears throat> are intent on creating um, basically a reality for each individual person. So let me give you a, an example of what I'm trying to say. I know that all of you out there already know about algorithms and you know that when you search something, more of that something comes to you. So when you click something on Amazon or, or whatever on YouTube, then that platform offers you more suggestions of the same. I know you already know that, but I didn't know how deep it was. And so basically, if I give you an analogy, this is what it's like. And, and this, this was an eye opener for me because it made me understand why we are so divided and why it is so important for us to really spread love and, and unity. So this is how I would see, say the way it works. You remember in the old days, you used to get a morning paper delivered to your door. And every day you'd read the newspaper, or if you were a kid, your parents would read the newspaper and all your neighbors were getting the same newspapers. So when you went and met your neighbors, you'd all read the same newspaper. You all knew what was happening in the current news and you all, you were all in tune with the same news, everybody, all your neighbors. So you could talk about something that was in the paper this morning and everyone would know what you're talking about. So now imagine this, imagine instead of everybody getting the same newspaper, imagine if every single person's newspaper had different news. So you're assuming your neighbor has the same paper as you. You're assuming every neighbor in your neighborhood is getting the same newspaper, but no, they're not. Every neighbor is getting a very different newspaper with different news. And the way, and each, imagine if the newspaper is actually able to deliver to your door articles that they know you will read and not give you articles that, um, that you don't believe in. And every single one of your neighbors is getting that. Now imagine if some of these articles are making you really angry and they're telling you stuff about other people, like other political parties that are not your party. So in other words, your newspaper will give you stuff that appeases your political party, but they're telling you horrible things about other political parties. Now imagine your neighbor is getting a newspaper that's telling you the opposite. Your neighbor's paper is telling them horrible things about the political party you believe in, but positive things about their political party. And so imagine as you are as every paper in the entire neighborhood and not just the entire neighborhood, the entire country, in the entire world, every paper is unique to that person. So no two people are getting exactly the same newsfeed. 
That is exactly what is happening. Give me a moment. Danny is saying that he needs to change the batteries on the mic. Have we already run out? Can people not hear me? They can hear you. Oh, good. The batteries are about to run out. Oh, okay. So give me a moment. Danny is here <laughs> on his hands and knees. <laughs> and he's just, uh, okay, I'm about to. Yes. Can you hear me? Tell me if you can. Um, tell me if you can't. And uh, thank you, Danny. That boo, he's amazing. Um, so batteries changed. He could see they were about to run out on my microphone. So now I want you to just think about that. Imagine that everybody in your neighborhood, everybody in the world is getting a unique newsfeed. So this is what's happening in social media. And the thing is, um, in order to, but, but here's where it gets a little bit disturbing, um, is that it's not being done for the good of the people. It's not being done to bring people together. The, 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 the people who run social media, they don't have necessarily a positive agenda. And this was really, really disturbing for me because all they want are numbers. And we know, you and I know, that fear sells. Negativity sells. It keeps people addicted. Bad news sells. Um, hatred seems to sell. Divisiveness seems to sell. Th what they want is eyeballs. They want eyeballs. They want people glued to their platforms. So this, I found this really disturbing and it explained to me why the world is so divisive right now. And as long as we're getting our news from social media in that way and mass media, the news channels, the cable news channels do that too. Um, we're all going to just be watching what we believe in and get angry at everybody we, who doesn't believe the way we do now. So basically what's happening is social media and why, why I brought in the video that I made previously about the parallel realities, social media and mass media, what they've done today is they have created parallel realities of people uh, within people where everybody is kind of living in their own reality. And as they're living in their own reality, they are actually feeling anger and fear and hatred towards the people who are not living in their reality. And social media and the mass media have kind of done that to us. So this is why it's so important for us to really um, see through this, see through that veil, this veil that has been created here in this physical reality, this veil that the internet has created. Um, and again, I highly recommend you watch that documentary. But in the interim, what am I doing about it, having learned about this? So number one is I'm making a commitment that when I'm on social media, I want to bring people together. I want my agenda to always be for, for the good of the world and for the good of people. Um, that's my agenda. If I'm going to use social media, I'm going to use it for good. That's what I want to do and that's my commitment and that's what I always want to do. And number two, I want to constantly remind you to take care of yourself and to take care of all of you, your physical self, your spiritual self, your emotional self, connect with your higher self and, and connect with other people and nurture yourself in that way, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all of it. Don't forget the rest of the physical world. Um, that's number two. I want to also remind you not to let your kids get addic addicted to social media. Um, it's, uh, it's so much better if they actually learn to be creative and to learn art and cooking and music and all these other things and connect with people. Um, I've started to connect with all kinds of things over these last months. Now, I started to feel weird about social media before I saw this 
documentary Social Dilemma. And I thought it was just me. And that's why, as you know, uh, you saw less of me on social media. But when I saw this documentary, it was like, oh my gosh, it makes sense. Now I understand why I had to take a break. I just saw it very recently, the documentary. And so I understood. And so now I actually plan to come back on social media because I now understand it. I can see through the veil. And I am actually, as I said, committed to putting out more quality stuff that is and my agenda is to bring people together i honestly don't care what your um what your political beliefs are i really don't i don't care what your religious beliefs are you're still human you're still here um and when we lash out in anger it's because we feel fearful or we don't understand how the other person is thinking so it's time for us to actually come together and to connect with each other. So having said that, what I started to do, as I was saying over these months, was I started to connect more with the other side. And I started to play with different things. I actually started to play more with crystals. I, I started to research and study more about crystals. So here's the thing. People ask me things like, what are my views on crystals or homeopathy or different things, just different stuff like that. Do I still use all these different things even though I had my near-death experience? And the truth is I do. I actually see an acupuncturist. I actually go for um, chiropractic care. I go for something called NET. I love all these things so much more because for me, these are all just tools and they empower me. So many years ago when I was sick, I was coming from a place of fear and a place of disempowerment. And because I was fearful, um, I wanted to try all these tools because I was desperate. I thought, I've got to try them all and I don't know which one will work and I wanted to try them all to see which one stuck. Interestingly, when you're coming from that place of fear, the energy is very, very different. What I encourage you to do is to come from a place of love regardless of where your body is at, even if you're dealing with, with a physical challenge, um, even if you're dealing with something that's been diagnosed as an illness, um, still just come from this place of, okay, my body is going through something. Let me love it through it. Let me, let me love myself and let me play because that is the idea. When you have physical challenges, mental challenges, emotional challenges, the thing to do is to see if you can get to this place of empowerment, this place of light, lightness, this place of playing. That's what I started to do over the months. I needed to get there to connect with my higher self so that I wouldn't get drawn in to the dilemma that was happening around me in this physical world. Um, so crystals, I find them amazing when I play with them. For me, it's like uh, all of these different m things. It's like if you think of a paint palette and these are all tools, they're like toys for me to play in. I find crystals to be very powerful and healing and, uh, and I love dabbling with them because they just feel really great. So in other words, do whatever feels great. It's not uh, so what does it mean when something disempowers you? What does that look like? What it looks like is that, ask yourself, do I feel fear if I don't have it? If you feel fear without it, then that means um, you're coming from a disempowered place. If you feel like, oh, these things are enhancing my life. I love them. They're so fun. It's just part of the rainbow of life to play with crystals or to play with all these other modalities. It's part of the rainbow of life. Then that's coming from a place of empowerment. I'll be really honest with you. Um, this is something that might be a little bit provocative, but I find that um, conventional medicine has taken too much bandwidth in our lives in the sense that what I'm trying to say is that there are so many people that come to me and say that their doctors say there's nothing more they can do or you have three months to live. I think it should be illegal for doctors to give somebody a death sentence and give them a time limit. That should be totally illegal because that really messes with your mind. Um, when people come to me and they say that and I always say 
That's because medicine doesn't have anything for you. But medicine is not the only tool. It's one of many tools out there. So first, you have to realize that you can heal. As long as you are breathing, as long as you have a zest for life, you want to live, you want to still find your purpose, you can live. You, have a, you, you do have some power in this, you, some power in this matter. It's not something, death is not something random that happens to you. So you need to be reminded of that. It's not something random. It is something that you have a part in. So what I strongly suggest people who are dealing with illnesses, find your purpose, find your passion, and play with lots of different tools. And, and come at it from a place of play, not from a place of fear. If any of these tools were taken away from you, you're not going to die because there's so many others. Um, so the thing to ask yourself is, if you, if you feel that if you miss a dose of your supplements, are you going to get sick? That's a place of disempowerment. Remember, and I always want to remind this of you, your body is more powerful than you have been led to believe. It really is. I worry about all the disempowering messages that you get fed every day. Um, I know that you have to follow protocols. I know you have to wear masks when you're around other people and when you go out. But remember, remember in your own head, I want you to know, even while you're following protocols, just know you are far greater than your physical body. You have a purpose. Um, you are here for a purpose. Find your purpose. Your body is much more powerful than you have been led to believe. Always remember that. I made it through all these months because I connected with a tribe of people. Um, I discovered um, NET. I'd known of NET for a while, but I really got into it. And I just want to give a shout out to an amazing NET practitioner um, here in my area. She works out of Torrance. Her name is Erica Burantes. She, if you want, ever want an NET practitioner and you're in this neck of the woods, please look up Erica. She's amazing. Just real quickly, I want to tell you of a breakthrough. While she was working on me, she's also an acupuncturist. Um, while she was working on me, she discovered I had a money block. This was really interesting. She discovered there was a money block and I wasn't even conscious of it. I didn't even know I had a money block because I thought, okay, I'm doing fine. I'm rolling along. I'm doing my thing. But she discovered that my body was reacting negatively to receiving money or even asking for money. And then I thought, yeah, she's right. Because um, if I have to ask somebody to pay me something, or if I have to tell someone that this is my fee, or if someone owes me money and I have to remind them to pay me back, it makes me cringe. It makes me feel shameful. You know, when I realize, oh my gosh, that is true. I hate asking people for money. Um, so as she did this, and this is the thing about NET, is that when, when she tests me, my body tests weak. When I'm pretending to ask for money, my body tests weak. So then she, what she does is she goes through a process to figure out when did this block start. So as she goes through this process, she discovered this block started at age six. And I thought, huh, age six. So she, and then she tests me. Is it from your parents? No, not from my mother, not from my father, not from my family. Was it from school? Yes. Was it from a person, a classmate? Yes, it was from a classmate. Oh, excuse me one moment. I'm going to tell Danny, I just heard the door. So Danny's going to answer the door while I just finish this quick thing because it was so powerful for me. Um, and it came as a yes, it was a classmate. I was like, huh. And then suddenly my memory, I remembered when I was six years old, there was this boy in my class that used to borrow money from me every day. Okay, so going back then in the 60s, I was six years old. I was living in Hong Kong. My dad used to give me one Hong Kong dollar, which today a Hong Kong dollar is like 12 US cents, by the way. But way back then in the 60s, he used to give me one Hong Kong dollar every morning when I would go to school and I would use that to buy my snacks. And so I was able to get something like either um, a soda or an ice cream or an ice lolly, ice popsicle, whatever you call them. I was able to get something. Those things were like 10 and 20 cents back then, Hong Kong cents. 
So anyway, I, he would give me a dollar, which was a lot of money. I could get a lot of stuff for a dollar. Um, and, and I would go in, you know, at break time and I would buy my snack. And there was this one boy that would come up to me and he would say, please, 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 can I borrow 10 cents for an ice lolly? And so I would, I would lend him the 10 cents and he would say, I, I'll pay you back tomorrow. Now, the next day he would do the same thing. And I would say, oh, you still owe me 10 cents from yesterday. And he'll go, I promise you, I'll pay it back to you tomorrow. Um, but I don't have it today, but I really need that ice lolly. So I would give him another 10 cents because as an empath, I would feel really bad for him. So I'd give him another 10 cents and this would go on every day. And then when I would say, but I really want you to give me the money you already owe me. It must be five or six days now. And I would lose track of how many days he would do this for. And he would say, oh, I promise you, I'll pay it all tomorrow. But I really, really want an ice lolly today. And I have no idea why his parents never gave him money because um, I, I had been to his home and, and everything and I knew he wasn't poor. And so, so um, I would still give him the 10 cents and this went on for a while. And so one day I just told my mom and he must have borrowed by that point, he must have borrowed at least a uh, dollar fifty or two dollars or two fifty. I don't know in my head. I don't know how many days he'd been doing it for. So I reached a point where I wasn't able to deal with his begging me every day for the ten cents. So I went and told my mom. And back in those days, you could actually look up people in the phone book. So my mom went and phoned his mom, and so it turned into a whole palava. And so I remember when I went to school the next day. At the end of school, when our moms would come to pick us up, his mom came up to me. She had come to pick up her son and she came up to me and she said, I want to give you back the money that my son owes you. And here will one dollar cover it. And I said, I don't know. I think so. Now, the way in which she gave it to me, she wasn't apologetic or anything. And I felt really bad. It was, I felt almost shameful. And it was almost as if she was um, bargaining with me to bring it down to $1. Because I think I had said that it was probably a dollar fifty or $2 by now. So I felt, ooh, I felt really cringy. Like there was a whole palava. I was embarrassed that his mother had come to the school. I was embarrassed she was giving me this dollar. And I didn't want to bargain with her or, or negotiate. Sorry, I didn't want to negotiate. So I just said, yeah, a dollar is fine. And I just wanted it to be over. And the kid never borrowed money from me again. And weirdly, I felt bad about it. I felt really bad, which is so typical of an empath. And I had not thought about that. So that was when I was six years old, back in the 60s, going back over 50 years. I'd forgotten about it. I didn't even know that programming was still running the show. Can you believe that? I didn't even know that I was awkward and shame, feeling shameful asking for money from then because of that. That got cleared on Wednesday, which is hilarious because I'd never thought about that story. And so on Wednesday, I was like, oh my God, that's an amazing story. So Wednesday, it gets cleared. Erica does a beautiful job of clearing layer upon layer. And then weirdly, Thursday morning, a check for $140 arrived in the mail, in my mailbox, and with a card that said, that this person just wanted to donate it to me for no reason, just because she was moved by my work. And I, and I texted Erica and I said, oh my God, this is so powerful. <laughs> I cleared the money, you know, being able to receive money and I got money for no reason at all. So I wanted to share with you how when you pierce through the veil, when you connect with the other side, when you clear all your blockages, when you can live from um, your kind of reality, how you can live, how you can make your, your life super powerful. You are connected. You're always connected. Please, please always connect to your, um, to your guides, to your angels, to your higher self, to your other side. One of the things that Erica always says, when I say, how do you know what to do with every client? And she goes, oh, my client's guides help me. They tell me what my client wants. And I was like, okay, this is good to know. Your guides are trying to communicate with you all the time, 
all the time. Please listen to them. Please give them more credence than social media, mass media. Give them more credence than you give me. Those are the people you got to listen to, your peeps on the other side. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all. Um, stay well, stay healthy, stay uplifted, stay happy, stay high vibe. And I will see you all soon. Oh, our platform, I almost forgot. Our platform is launching on 11.11. Um, and that platform, in that platform, what we want to do is really create a beautiful reality where everybody can feel uplifted, where everything we do is for the good of all of us, for us as individuals, for us as a collective, and for humanity as a whole. That's what we want to do. And that's the aim, and that's what we plan to do. So stay tuned for more. Thank you all so much. Can't wait to see you all soon. Bye.